Oh, well, tide's coming in fast. They took the zodiac and uh, went up this inlet. I gotta tie it off to a rock up on that end. And this whole trough, I don't know if you can see it. This whole thing's gonna be up to here with the salt water fairly soon. Good spot for bear to come out. Do we, uh, I think we're up before 30. Fish for first light, got some big spring salmon. Shitty weather. And then I uh, saw something huge on a beach, throwing towards shore, and I got the camera on it just in time for it to go up the timber. I'm pretty sure it's a monster bear. Um, I won't be able to edit that up or have a look at it on a big screen until I get back. But I got the GoPro with me, so I can do a little share with everybody while I'm here. And uh, see what we got. Here, I'm gonna be here for a few more days yet. So this is a handy little unit. Gets me away from the dock. I mean, on the dock, dock life's kind of fun, but sometimes you just, after you've been getting the shit beat out of you on the boat and stuff, you just, it's good to get alone and regroup. Take a break, so to say, you know what I mean? Now, anyway, I've caught this in one of my, in, in the inbox recently. It's the recent reply to uh, recent emails shared, right? And, re, and recent words from me. Listen to this. This is from the Arizona Four. This is a group of people who have had ongoing interactions with these beings for quite some time. And the title of this is, Why Darkness Has More Activity. And this is, and that says, long one, sorry. All good, man. I don't mind how long. From you guys especially. Steve, you asked me, why darkness has more activity? And this is my current belief and subject to change as I, we, acquire more understanding of our forest friends. I see it as one of the main reasons that applies to us and another main reason as it applies to them. The reason for us is that we are blind as a bat when it comes to night vision. Of course, there are other factors which come into play against us. Like most folks are going to go to sleep, and they know it. Also, we have a pre-programmed fear of things that go bump in the night. This factor greatly amuses them. As I said before, we are their, we are their entertainment. Look at it this way. If we're at war and the enemy has no night vision, then should we send in our troops? A no-brainer. Now, there are other factors in play that I feel are even more important, at least to the forest people. Of course, these pros and cons also apply to other beings or entities that roam this planet of ours. The forest people have rules they need to follow, or maybe I should say, kind of follow. They are not to be seen is the cornerstone of a few rules. Not getting their picture taken is another biggie to them. Another factor most don't think about or even realize is that each area that a family or a clan that lives in is ruled by one elder. If that elder wants no contact with humans, then each family or clan member is wise to not go against their leader wishes. Will some bend the rules? Of course some will. In this case, this area would be considered a dead area, low to no activity. Now, if a leader hates human or just plain does not want them in their area, his clan has the green light to F with basically anyone in their area. Of course, the prime directive still applies. Another factor that that leader, another factor that the leader well knows is that if, if humans start missing in an area, they will without a doubt get more folks entering the area in search of the missing. Law enforcement, search and rescue, and eventually government agencies. The forest people are intelligent beings. This is why I believe some folks get run out of specific areas. Of course, another factor is if they don't like you, then they want you gone. If they like you, then we have the other side of the coin. Some people are accepted right off the bat. If, like, sometimes they will test this new person's mettle. I think they're more apt to protect us. Sometimes chasing a human from an area is for the protection. When it comes to activity, everything is dependent on that area. If one feels they should leave, then they should leave. Let's jump over to daytime encounters if you allow. In the daytime, we have a little better defense, or should I say vision. They know this, and I feel that they will not allow their young and inexperienced into areas that has the crazy humans that the crazy humans are in. There are factors that can interfere with their vastly superior early detection abilities. So, accidental run-ins do occur. But in general, they know we where we are. If they want to keep us out of an area, they are more than capable to do so. Just over the Memorial Weekend, I was up at one of our spots. I was camped probably 80 yards from Kevin's spot. At the end of the evening, I attempted to walk back to my truck. Easy, right? After all, I have been camping in this exact spot for about 25 years. 
I started exactly towards my truck. I was walking with my trusty red flashlight. The next thing I realized was that my left foot stepped on the road. The road was to my five o'clock position when I first started walking. What the hell, I thought. Why is my foot on the road? Then I realized my head was in a cloud. I snapped out of this fog when my foot hit the road. I looked over to the camp I just left. Then I looked towards where my truck should be in pitch black. Son of a bitch, guys, really. I was not focused, and one of them got a good chuckle. At least they did not walk me into a tree. At least they did not walk me into a tree. I was their late night entertainment that night, and I owe them one. Boat's still there. At least they didn't walk me a tree. I was there like, sorry. Now, about why we, the Arizona Four, get so much activity at night. We have another thing in our favor. We have their trust. When we do get a night, when we do get a night with lots of activity, we almost always have the young ones come in first. I really enjoy when the young ones are visiting us. I believe we all do. We can at times feel their excitement to visit us. They are allowed to come in and it is for fun and it is fun for them, but I know this is also a learning session for them as well. Recently we recently we now setting we're now setting out an extra camp chair too. Because sometimes we'll see a small distortion sitting in the chair. Wild shit, huh? Seeing little legs kicking is something one has to see. It is so awesome. I know this is hard to believe. Some will call BS on this, but we don't care. This is a gift from the elders, not only to us, but to their young. For the elders to allow this means they really trust us. And oh yeah, we learned that we have a young visitor. Sorry. Oh yeah, when we learn that we have a young visitor, no one is to do any quick movements, like standing up, stretching, or reaching for a drink or food. If one does, in a blink of an eye, that distortion is gone. Anyway, the young ones will visit for maybe an hour or so. They are not really allowed to mind speak with us. We've had them tell us their age sometimes, but never their name. Oh, they are allowed to say hi, according to them. Seriously, Steve, if you or Dave is ever passing through, consider going out a night or two. No promises and not during hunting seasons. Focus Rob back to the main agenda. So if we get visited by the young ones, then after they leave, we usually get the young adults mixed with an elder or two. That is the main time we are able to ask questions with the best chance of getting answers back via mind speak. Well, I wanted to get to that arrow you talked about. The arrow, it's probably the arrow that I found sticking out of the snow seven months later. In short, that was them and you know it was. Steve, they know of you. And from what we understand, they approve of what you're doing. At least the clans that we uh, interact with. Remember what one knows, they all know. I will have a PS after I sign out. This is for you. But if you choose to share, then share. Read first before deciding. Take care until next time, Rob. All right, hold on a minute. P.S. Kevin was approached by some video art student to make video and Bigfoot slash Mogolong monster, pronounced Mugion. Kevin said, if you want someone to tell the Mugion monster story, then Chuck is your guy. Kevin and Chuck interviewed this guy. They decided to do this video. I don't think we would have. I don't think would have. I'm not that trusting, I guess. Onward. Below is the link if you want to watch the end project. I hope this guy got an A because I think he did an excellent job for a school project. I know your viewers would love to watch this, but that is totally your call. I really wanted you to have the option to watch this. You can get a visual and audio of Kevin and Chuck. And this will help you determine if the Arizona 4 is worthy of your channel's time or if you want to block us. <laughs> We're hoping someday to hook up with you, or maybe if you ever do any online chats. If you decide to post the link to your viewers, 10 to 1 you don't. Kevin and Chuck are okay with that. Alright, the link's not in this, right here. I'm going to have to go back. And uh, once I get home, I'll go back and find that in the email. Robin will hit it, right? For sure. I appreciate you saying that in, man. I really, really appreciate it. I'm really happy you guys are still watching. 
and I really want to get back to you guys. And there's another uh, small handful of people who are having the same experiences as you, in a way, ongoing, and they're not they're not um, exploiting them in any way. They're not trying to uh, make a big uh, attention grabbing deal about it. You know what I mean? So, um, and as you guys all know, by the sheer amount of emails I'm getting and, and I always say, uh, everyone will be heard. So I try to make that priority is getting as many emails cracked open as I can. Cause, um, I'm sure you all understand that it takes a lot of guts to share your story. It takes a lot. A lot of people are troubled. A lot of people don't even want to write it down, but it's bring, this is doing, this is bringing comfort to a lot of people. So I can't just cherry pick a half a dozen people out of all these emails and concentrate on going back and forth with them nonstop, right? Because there's a lot of people that I, I, I want to get heard. They need to be heard, no matter how significant their experience may be, may be to the viewers or not, right? But um, I'm obviously in one of my very busy times of the year. This whole past one year has been a little insane for me, right? Behind the farm and basically rebuilding the whole damn thing and then carrying on with all my regular things that I do in the outdoors, right? But anyway, my boat is literally floating. The water has literally covered dry land in front of me in this short time that I've read this one email. So I'm going to go, uh, I got to go get it and uh, retie it up here closer maybe. And I'm going to resume recording more in a second, all right? There it is. <laughs> it's right there. So I got to bring it in here because all this is filling up. And obviously the water's going to be right to where I'm standing in a minute. So I'll be back in a second. Look at how fast this, I don't know if you can tell, see the current, how fast this tide's moving. It is ripping in. It's all going to be completely full of ocean in a real short period of time. Pretty wild how fast that, that moves. Now, there we go. More people need their experiences shared. Camera's heavy. Always got a camera. Next in line. My nephew just saw one last week right outside his window. Also, resending a story that hasn't been read. All right, here we go. First, I want to say something about the man that emailed in a few days ago and was talking about the skeleton-looking thing and how the elder native man would not tell him what it was, and they didn't talk about it. He was saying that for a reason, and when you talk about shit like that and or know what it is, thinking and talking about it can invite it into your life. Evil shit. None of us want it. None of us want nothing to do with. I don't know what it was he's seen, but 99% of the time an elder native tells you that is for your own good. Remember that first email I sent in and was talking about the secret society slash religion my people used to do and some still do. I should put some light on that situation for you. Some people can still see that shit and most can't. I think I told my Graham story in that email as well. Hope that helps a little at least. Also want to speak on the man and his son that heard the ghost heard and then bipedal steps chasing up the creek. When you said it sounded like drums, usually that is what we call stick Indians because basically they are old spirits that live all around us and that may be, and that may have been what that was. Hold on. Look at, there goes the boat's just ripping. See that? Lucky I tied it up. That was high and dry a second ago. So, sorry, got my attention over there. When he said it, like drum, when he said it sounded like drums, usually, that is what we call stick Indians. Basically, they are old spirits that live all around us, and that may have been what that was. They basically go hand in hand with Sasquatch. Me and my brother were in a clear cut 
in all directions at the end of a spur road, and we started hearing something running, like a herd. We were hunting. After the herd running by, my brother left, let off around in the air, then the drums started. It was crazy. I have a picture of stick and ends. I will send that full story and the picture after this gets read. That's going to be interesting. As long as my boat doesn't float away and I don't get out of here. <laughs> Congratulations on the successful move. This is Adrian again with my third share. I'm forwarding this again. Sent originally October 3rd. Hopefully you have time to read it. To all for you. Ask people if they're going to send their story again to forward the old email. Might make shit easier, lol. Okay, there you go. It's funny when things have got my attention if I'm not completely fully focused on reading. I'm not that smooth. I can see my knot right there, so it kind of bugs me a little bit when your boat's starting to float away, even though it's tied up. Get out of your way in case you see a bear behind me. I just got, I just got off work and was driving home. I was just working in the village where, my, where I live. When on my way home, I drove up on my friend, pulled over by one of the, pulled over by one of the Raz cops. I stopped right next to where he was pulled over and knowing he did not have a license, that he was gonna get booked and released. I asked the cop and my buddy if he wanted me to go tell his, his woman so she could come get the car. The officer told me to just come grab him in 20 minutes and toss me the keys. Yeah, this is the res, a small one, and shit like this happens all the time. I said, okay, and pulled up the road about a block, took a right and parked in front of my aunt's house, got out and started walking over to his car so it would not be sitting partially in one of, my, one of the neighbor's driveway. As I made my way to the road where he got pulled over and started crossing the street to hop in his car, I could hear a noise coming from the tiny strip of woods that is between the school's football field and the road. I stopped about halfway across the road and was listening and realized that it was breathing and it was a long inhale and a faster pace exhale. I sat in the road listening and the first thing I thought was a big black bear taking a long sniff at something in the ground and then letting his exhale out. I was listening for about 15 seconds and started walking backwards to my car. I grabbed my pistol and a flashlight and started walking back over there. As I got to the same place in the road, I could hear it again, but it had moved a bit closer to the car. I shone my light on the edge of the woods and walked slowly to the car. And when I got to the car, I could hear that it was bigger than I thought. So I got in and took off pretty quickly. After thinking about it and listening to this thing, and listening to it, this thing was huge. I drove to the jail, to the jail got my friend, then we started heading back to my car, parked to my aunt's, which is just a half a mile or so. When we pulled up, I parked behind my car, and my cousin was just getting home, him and his woman. I was telling my buddy about the bear. I could hear breathing on our drive back, then told my cousin when we got out. My cousin's kind of a crazy effer, and was kind of excited when I told him. He said, you think it's still there? I told him it, I told him it wasn't bothering, it wasn't bothered by me walking close to it. So we walked the, a block and a half over to the spot in the road where I started hearing it. When we got to the spot, we could hear it, and it was even louder than before. And as soon as they heard it, they both were saying, holy shit, what the F is that? I shined my light on the woods where the breathing was coming from, and where I was shining light, there was a four-foot berm along the trees, and it was out of sight, but sounded like it was super close, and it sounded like it was facing us. My cousin turned around and grabbed a few rocks off the side of the road, and that effort throws three good-sized rocks right where the breathing was coming from. As soon as he threw the rocks in the woods, we could hear some sticks breaking and heard some footsteps. We all said it's moving and quickly realized that it was walking on two feet and it was heavy. Right when we heard the two steps and how heavy it was, we knew what it was. Growing up here, we are taught about these things when we are young. The part that still confuses me to this day is it never did put the fear in us or scream or started whooping. It just started walking away. So we par paralleled it along the road and could hear it speeding up and making its way up a steep hill really fast. We started jogging down the road and followed it probably three blocks. The reason we did this is because the little patch of woods that it was in is surrounded by paved roads. So we figured we could see it crossing the road at some point since it was not trying to scare us away. This all happened very fast. I do not recommend this to anyone. 
As we followed it down the road, it got away quick. And as we were getting to the point where we could see it, if it started crossing the road to get into the woods that surrounds our village in three directions for 30 miles, the other side is ocean. Missing a little bit of punctuation, you guys, right? Big sentences. But as we were getting to that point where we could see if it started crossing, there was a scream we've all heard before. And it came from another direction of woods that was back in the direction where we parked the cars. It's about a quarter mile past my aunt's house. As soon as it screamed, all the dogs in the area by my aunt's house took off barking and ran out into the woods. We know here that these, we know here that these, that these things do and can throw their voice. And we knew it was time to get back to the house. So we jogged back the few blocks and we could hear the dogs getting farther and farther into the woods to where we could barely hear them anymore. As we're sitting there catching our breath and listening to the barks fade away, then all of a sudden the dogs quit barking altogether. We sat there for a few minutes after the dogs all quit barking and thought it was all over. We were standing in my aunt's backyard about 10 yards from the edge of the woods. After 10 minutes of silence, not hearing any of the dogs bark or moving through the woods, the weirdest shit happened. Me and my cousin were standing there in the yard and my buddy just walked in the house and my and my buddy just walked in the house. Five full-grown dogs came walking out a little hole in the bushes. So without making a sound, five big dogs made it from where we could barely hear them barking to walking out of the woods right in front of us through some thick brush with zero noise. The dogs came walking out nose to ass all in single file line and walked straight to us. And all of them sat on their butts staring at us and sat there staring at us ignoring what we were saying, then they dispersed after a few minutes. And that is what freaked me out the most, was the dogs and the way they were acting. All this shit happened in a short amount of time, probably 20, 25 minutes, from when my cousin threw the rocks till the dogs dispersed. The next day, my cousin cut down all the brush behind my aunt's house. And that's when I think the Sasquatch got mad, got mad, because it no longer had the cover of the bush. The next night, my auntie was cleaning her last office just around the corner from her house. And as she was locking the door, it sounded like four of them started whooping at her. She was scared shitless. And her dog, who was one of the fifth from the night before, was crying. And that dog had a few run-ins with Sasquatch. One time, she was literally thrown at one of my aunt's neighbor's front door. She busted through it and went sliding across the tile floor and hit the wall. The office where she was locking up at is right off the side of the road where the thing really started moving up that hill and then through its voice. They whooped at her for about 10 minutes until my other auntie pulled up in her car. She came to pick her up so she wouldn't have to walk back to the house while they were trying to scare her, which they did. I know this is super long again, but I forgot to add this happened right by my, I forgot to add this I forgot to add, this happened right by my grams that I talked about in my first email, Four Houses Away. Hopefully this turned out okay and was easier to read. I'm not an English major, and I'm a commercial crab fisherman and guide for salmon and steelhead. Oh, well, I can relate. <laughs> also, I was talking to a client I took steelhead fishing about a month and a half ago, and he is native from Oregon, and we got to talking about Sasquatch, and he told me that his uncle and cousin got a picture of one clear as day. And they tried to release it in the local paper where they live, and a couple days later, he showed up and told them not to do anything with the photo. Then told them that all they have a picture of is a bear. He said, it is clear as day, standing there looking at them, you can see the face and all. I'll ask him to send me a picture of it. No promises, but I'll try. I took him fishing right before Christmas, so I added this while sending again. My nephew's account that just happened last week it is now May 7th today. My nephew, who actually just got released from prison for drug charges, dumbass, was home about three days. That night he was up on the phone talking to his girlfriend at about 2.30 a.m. and he heard something brush against the wall outside his window. So he turned the TV down and could hear heavy breathing and something going through the garbage right outside his window. The window, which was a three foot by four foot sliding window with a screen, was cracked about four inches so he could hear it pretty good. He thought it was a dog or a bear, so he hit his fist on the wall three times and yelled, Hey! Then reached for the cord to raise the blinds. As he was raising up the blinds, 
He got them about halfway up and boom, boom, something pounded back on the wall. He thought it was someone messing with him. He pulled up the blinds all the way up and that effer stood up right in front of the window, taking up damn near the entire window. He said he couldn't see his face or anything, just his arms and shoulders taking up most of the window. He screamed and jumped back. The Sasquatch made a frustrated exhale, grabbed a bag of trash and walked across the road. And I'm guessing swam back across the river where he lives. This particular Sasquatch has been seen off and on for the past few months. My other nephew actually seen him a month before crossing the street where my nephew is staying, and he said it's every bit of eight feet tall, but he looks older. Gray hair that is pretty long and grayish color skin. When my nephew called me the next day to help him move his garbage, because they haven't brought him a can yet, when we were loading the bags there, was a big ass greasy handprint on one of the bags and tear marks from where his nails dug into the bag. I hope you have time to read these stories. I'm sure they got skipped a few times for length, but until I hear them on the channel, I'll hold up on other encounters that I have, because where I live, they are a dime a dozen, and there are a lot of other people that have more important stuff to share. Oh, and just a f for your information for the viewers, Sasquatch are capable of throwing their voices. Make it sound like it's coming from far away. Ever since I was a, just a kid, the elders would tell us that the closer they sound, they're more likely farther away. Also, the farther away they sound means that they're usually way effing close. Way too effing close. That's like rule number one, we were told as kids. Okay, that's an interesting point there that I would take note of. Okay. Let's read that one more time. Also, the farther away they sound means that they are usually way too effing close. That makes sense to me, especially them being the successful predator type they can be, right? And I'm not saying they're just predators, so are we. We're natural predators. Thought it might help some people who've had encounters where it sounds far away, but they close the distance fast. It's more than likely that they were there with you the whole time. That's the end of that one. And I got the bright sky reflecting on this damn camera again, which I can't stand, you guys. And I've been up forever. But anyways, I really, really appreciate you sending that in, man. And uh, of course, I want you to send me more and not to stop. All right? I especially, I don't know why. I haven't a clue why. I just, um, I am drawn to the knowledge shared to me and to the people here from the First Nations people. It. It, it really, I don't know, something sparks in me when uh, the First Nations people email me and want to share. I don't know why that is different than other people. It just is. I can't explain it. But um, as far as the photo goes, the clear photo, obviously the, the, the audience is going to be jumping up and down screaming like a bunch of maniacs saying, share it. Where is it? Bullshit. Um, I know of a handful of people firsthand in British Columbia who have seen clear photographs of these beings. As usual, just there's always something, some kind of a stumble that happens where we can't get a hold of it or can't get our eyes on it, right? So we'll see. If, if you can get a hold of your friends, the three-letter agency, this three-letter agencies can suck it, every one of them. Ram it up your frickin' filthy, dirty asses. You got no respect here. And I'm quite sure there's a handful of you watching this channel. If you are, up your ass. Um, everything's about the people, period. Nothing is about the power mongers. It's all about the people here and we are the strongest force on the planet. Just to, and unfortunately, most of us don't realize that yet, right? But anyway, uh, share away, man. Share, share more, share all you got. I'm here and I am eager and waiting. If you can manage to pull off the photograph share, the audience would probably be ecstatic. Now, um, I gotta get to the boat because it's getting where I tied my rope off on the boulder. I think it's gonna be getting a little deeper than my boots. So I'm gonna go jump in the boat, go somewhere else maybe and add in another one before I hit her back. And uh, I'll be back shortly. And again, thank you so much for that share. I'm sorry it took so long to get to, but Obviously, there's nothing I can do about it. When it comes up, it comes up, and I read them, right? And they are all over the place. Thousands of these email shares. All right, hope that works. Had to wedge the little GoPro in a log jam. The wind's kind of ripping over here. 
I don't know how that microphone makes out in the wind. There's nothing worse than getting a bunch of this done. You get back and the, the wind killed the person's email. That old shack behind me, I don't know if you can see it in this camera, but it was in that condition over 25 years ago. I shot a huge bear right there 25 years ago, over over 25. The, the stories that cabin could tell, I don't know whose it was, who built it, what went on there, but I'll bet you it would be really interesting to find out. Now, let's add one more here before I get out of here. This is titled Ridiculed and Redeemed. Live show is excellent. Man, when was this? 2020, holy cow. <laughs> Live show is excellent. Looking forward to the podcast. The Trudeau government comment was deadly. I can't agree more. I had a couple of encounters when I was younger and I spent my entire life sharing these stories and getting ridiculed. A close friend of mine who once laughed at my story recently shared a story with me. This story took place September 2010 or 11. A group that he was with was harvesting an outdoor grow show operation in Hardwick Island, just off the east coast of Vancouver Island near Sayward. The grow up was a 30 minute hike from the beach. He was cleaning up all the garbage from the recent... Okay, we read this actually. Okay, I'll read. it's a short one, I'll read it again anyways. This is a while back, but I remember reading this. This story took place, okay, he was cleaning up all the garbage from the recently harvested area. The group he was with took off down to the boat before him. He finished bagging up all the garbage and started making his way down the trail to the boat. He was probably 15 to 20 minutes from the boat when a large 9-foot male walked onto the trail in front of him, stopped and stared at him, stared at him for about 40 feet. He told me that the Sasquatch was more a human than ape, with dark eyes, dark brown hair, and looked at him with an evil, angry stare. He felt the look was telling him to leave and leave now. The Sasquatch walked back into the bush opposite direction from where I came from, and my friend had no choice but to walk in the same direction and pass through that same area to make his way back to the boat that would suck. He blacked out from fear on the trip back to the boat. And is to say, the ex this experience completely changed him, and he apologized for laughing me off when we were younger. Liam Fitzsimmons. Well, the redemption's pretty good. And uh, that reminds me, I was going to mention something kind of funny. Uh, I was thinking about it a while ago. You know, when so many people have heard the voice, thinking about this mind speak thing, and thinking about if it is going to be possible for me to experience it one day. Not that I'm craving it, I'm just curious. But, um... Imagine if somebody had a set of nuts on them the size of frickin' watermelons, and uh, they heard the, the voice in their head saying, Get away! Leave now! Go away! Imagine if you could just turn around in your head and go, Ram it up your ass! I'm, no, I'm not going anywhere! What are you going to do about it? I wonder what would happen if a human being actually tried that. <laughs> you know, I wonder what would really happen. And another thing, too, that I was kind of laughing about the other day I was picturing is when I'm almost what I'd say what 95% of people say that these beings look at them with absolute rage and anger and hate in their face Now let's just say one of these beings ran into somebody who was a little numb between the ears and had ice for blood and uh, You stared right back at them <laughs> with a face like if you have it if you're not familiar with it, look up the uh, clay guida Diego Sanchez stare off stare down and if you did that face is example of those two. I wonder what would happen if you gave the look right back to him. Oh yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like a stare down before going at it in a professional boat. I wonder what that would trigger. What that would cause. They'd either break down laughing. I'd imagine they'd probably start laughing their asses off at that unexpected reaction or maybe they would have to ramp it up to make sure they got the respect they were looking for, right? And that wouldn't be too good. Boat's still there. Nothing thrown at me, no bears behind me. That means I'm gonna get another one shared and then I'm gonna get going. It's a crazy world out there, man. So many people's lives are changed when they have when they get slapped in the face with this reality and they enter the club and no return. Absolutely changes your life without a doubt. Short story, much appreciation is the title of this one. Well, my name is Al. I'm from the OH. I like to keep this short, but I'm going to preface this by saying I've been a fan for some time and have been on the fence about sharing my experience. But if it'll help convince someone with similar circumstances to come forward to share their own story, then I think it is worth it. 
I live on the East Coast. A lot of people there think that these beings are a Western phenomenon and is frequently or commonly referred to as a hoax. I know better. And people in the South know better too. They call them skunk apes. And though they're not as big as the Northern Giants, these things make up for it by having fangs similar to... similar to... Billy Ape? These do not resemble humans in the face. They look like chimps. And while they're often not known to be aggressive toward humans, they are known to be very territorial and get with or fight what the locals call dog heads. And in the plains region, buffalo wolves. I've heard screams, hoops, hollers, and the loudest roar you can imagine. So much force, you can feel the vibration in your chest that I've only ever seen one of them one time, and it was running away. It was chocolate brown, and it was running upright away from me. What else runs upright on two legs like a person? I know this, it's not a bear. Thank you so much for everything you do. I love your content as well as your message. Never change, my man. If I may, before I, if I may, before I go, I'd like to ask one quick question. What kind of shepherd is that in your latest video where you showed us a beautiful dog you, you have and you have piqued my curiosity sincerely, Al J. Uh, it wasn't my dog, it's my friend's dog. I forget the name of the damn thing. Uh, I think Sarah's interested in getting a pup off of it. They're, they're gonna breed it. Totally forget the breed of that dog, but it's a great big freaking dog, and I and that dog is a full-on guard dog for one of their ranch houses, and it stays there full time. It's like a freaking kitten when you come up to it, but I've seen it in action when it's going for a stranger, going to protect the property. It's lightning fast and pretty intimidating. Pretty intimidating. <clears throat> what was I going to ask? Damn, I was going to ask a question. Yeah, it'll come to me later on. I'm cross-eyed tired. My eyeballs probably sunk six inches back on in my head. Too early. I'll tell you what, when you're, when you're doing the, oh, the fishing thing, your day starts at five in the morning. <laughs> so by the time noon, one o'clock rolls around, it's it's like the end of your day, it feels like. And I think it's like 3.30 now. So I'm like, I'm done like dinner. We still got to go and barbecue some buffalo on the dock and shoot the shit, tell the fish stories, and then get up and go do it again. So anyway, maybe I can pull off another one of these tomorrow. What day is it tomorrow? Tomorrow's Sunday, I think. And I'll be back shortly. And uh, we're going to get that phone call done uh, the day I get back. I was just too busy. I was too freaking busy. I had a goal that I had to reach so that before we could take off to go to the coast and I had to go non-stop all day to make sure I reached that goal and I did and the pressure is on and once I put the pressure on myself to do so, or if I say I'm going to do something I do it at all costs so um, the phone call will be going down in the next 48 hours probably day after tomorrow and then we'll get that rocking out and then totally forgot uh, Sarah has a new co-worker First Nations lady her father grew up in the Northwest Territories in the woods. Get this one. Completely survived, harvested everything on his own, guided for big game for fish. Um, met her mom while guiding. She's not native. And he has had numerous Sasquatch encounters. And he's basically grew up living completely off the land 100% for a huge long portion of his life. And I'm going to see if... He will agree to come and talk to me, and I'll videotape the conversation. And I think that would be mind-boggling, interesting, and hopefully very knowledgeable too. And knowledge-filled conversation, sorry. Anyways, I gotta get going. I'm starting to stumble my words, and I think I'm seeing kind of cross-eyed. <laughs> I'll be back again shortly.